A day in the life at the employing, um, the Steve Jobs Co. We have two visitors, Dan and Hillary, who are from alt school and from state schools in America. And alt school is basically yeah, our equivalent of the Steve Jobs Co. in America. The only thing is uh, they have $100 million in funding. And we don't. We are paid by the government. And I just want to know what they think of this school and what the difference is between how they're setting it up. And I want to compare it to the state school. Very interesting interview coming up. Okay, Dan, you are basically, uh, you're from alt school. We've heard a lot about alt school, especially yeah. about the 40 million funding, the 100 million funding. Yeah. But you've now looked at our school. Uh, how does it differ from your, uh, from your place? And what do you think yeah. of it? Um, I think it's, you know, generally it's, it's very similar. Um, the biggest differences to me is how we structure the space and time for students and the teachers, yeah. um, where our students uh, tend to stay in a similar space throughout the day, although it is more flexible. It's not as regimented with a specific schedule, going from one classroom that's specifically focused on one subject to another. Mm -hmm. um, our students so you basically still have the class system. People are in a class, and one yeah. teacher teaches all the different subjects. Yeah, and so maybe I can actually describe what one school would potentially look like. So if we have... Um, four classrooms in one school. Um, there will be one classroom focused on lower elementary, kind of mixed age students, all the way up to uh, what we call middle school. So kind of two and a half years flexible age. And although some students do go from one classroom to another, um, they often kind of stay with those two core teachers throughout the day. Um, there's a flexible drop off period, just like there is here for an hour or so in the morning. Then they tend to have kind of key check in points throughout the day where students will be working independently on their iPads or on individualized programs. Teachers will pull small groups or maybe even rotate students between those two teachers, yeah. um, but they're not rotating or going between classes at specific times. Yeah, we basically let that go. We don't have classes anymore. We have groups and people go from one yeah. classroom to the other, and the teachers also have a specialty so how, how do you what do you think of that uh, concept yeah. you know I think I think there's a few things that we really appreciate about having dedicated teachers for dedicated classrooms I think some of the social and emotional curriculum that we really focus on um, is empowered a lot by having such close relationships with these two teachers and having those same two teachers all day working on those same kind of personal goals for students throughout the day so I think in some ways that's a small advantage but it I is a big advantage but you have two teachers per how many right. kids are in the classroom about 22 students yeah, so you have 10 uh, basically we have 25 kids yeah. per and uh, we also have that social function but the teacher who basically teaches math also has to be ma has to be a coach for 25 and, and on the social emotional so you have a lot more time per kid and certainly there's some disadvantages as well I think like looking at the spaces and how the spaces can be more specialized one of the things I was commenting on is um, you know, as we're building new campuses, it's really challenged. I it's a big challenge to think of how we make that space mm -hmm. flexible enough for mixed age students, flexible enough for all subjects. And I think those two huge spectrums to personalize one space on yeah. are really challenging. So even being able to cut one of those out of the equation of subjects and the manipulatives that you need is actually pretty liberating I'm sure I can imagine hey and the business model is there are private schools and there's about it's about 23 yeah. of 24 thousand uh, dollars per child per year and and the business model of uh, of, of alt school is uh, you basically that's that's a commercial venture uh, right yeah and so you know there's basically a few things about about alt school that's the vision is, is right now we have private schools that we're running and operating where it does cost tuition for our students to come to the school um, and then, you know, we think we, we want to do this phase really well so that we're building software and central support systems that could actually eventually help public schools in the United States as well. And so, um, you know, the, the ambition isn't necessarily to build a party, uh, a, a, a huge network solely of first party private schools that cost money to go to. Yeah. Um, the vision is, is to do that in our controlled environment till we get some of the really great answers that we know we can find and then it's a like same like tesla you first build a sports car for a hundred thousand dollars hundred fifty thousand and then you basically slowly make your way to to uh, exactly right. yeah at the moment you're four times more expensive than what we get per year so uh, and we're trying to do the same thing to yeah. make everything available um is there uh, let me go to hillary hillary i mean you're working for a state school program kit or something what was the name kip k-i-p-p -P, knowledge is power program and um, we have about 200 schools across the united states and what our program has done over the past 20 years is going to the low-income communities in the united states where traditionally the lowest performing schools exist where teachers don't want to teach mm -hmm. and we actually give up some of our public funding so we tell the government you can keep 40 percent of your money we'll take less money but give it less rules. 
less rules. We get to hire our own teachers. We can teach however we want. Um, but with that comes a lot of responsibility, of course. So How do you fund that, that 40% plus the other money you need? So we have a not-for-profit um, program, Knowledge is Power program, that's a, a nationwide foundation that helps us fundraise. And they raise millions and millions of dollars that then we can use as we see fit. We don't have to spend the money the way the government tells us. So it's very challenging, very different than this, um, much more traditional. Our students... The teacher has the knowledge, the students listen. Um, while we do have technology, our students are very much confined to the resources that we have. Um, and I think that we figured out how to do it the best that it can be done, and there's still a ceiling. Our students do very well on standardized tests. Our students who traditionally are very disadvantaged, um, our, our mission is to and through college. So we're providing that opportunity to students who wouldn't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. that's the very best it can be and we know it's not as well, You're doing a fantastic job. It's really very, very useful. And you guys are married, so in two sides of the pillow, I mean, one side, you basically have the disadvantaged kid and you're working with the rich kids. How does that go together? Yeah, well, uh, you know, I think technology and innovation, um, I, that was the biggest thing that I felt transitioning to San Francisco and working in kind of how reform can happen. And I think that that happens through kind of like you said with Tesla and and the opportunity to raise money and have a uh, flexible environment to create a system that's kind of the aspiration. And uh, for us to do that, we have to be able to solve those problems ourselves with all of these resources before we can go to KIPP or another school system and say, hey, we have the answers. Mm -hmm. And so this phase if is... You're ready, if you're ready for it, I mean, <laughs> it's very close by to basically start yeah. using... We have students from, from my school that started at his school this year and through a scholarship program that Alt School is very generous with their scholarships. And my students who did well at my program are doing very well at their program. So, you know, kids are kids. They'll the other way around didn't happen yet, huh? It's right. good. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but I think the teachers should come visit my school maybe once a year just to remember how challenging it could be because sometimes teachers can be just a little bit spoiled I yeah. think. now you see i mean it, one thing we look at uh, in the netherlands we are you know we, there's a big difference between rich and poor but it is not as you know america is all out, all of the place mm -hmm. and you have that in 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 in, in one marriage that mm -hmm. you see the two sides yeah. of the cone how do you see this progressing i mean you have had an initiative it's really brave what you did getting rid of money from the government mm -hmm. and getting rid of rules but how do you see that developing those uh, that 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 split in opportunities well I think like what Dan said that they're they're solving problems for every teacher while not every teacher has access to it yet just the idea that those students at alt school have 150 people that are some of the most talented and most um, most some of the most talented technologists in San Francisco that they chose not to work at Google or Apple they chose to work for children that's gonna help my children soon mm -hmm. Wow what a beautiful, what a beautiful inspirational thought that you can basically have an elite school making the tools and basically making the transition to the poor state schools. We'll see how that goes. Good yeah. luck with that. Thank you. Thank you.